right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Pamela Jett, who is in Arizona. How are you doing, Pamela? I'm well, thank you. Excellent, excellent. And Pamela is an internationally recognized communication and leadership expert, speaker, author, and executive advisor. Pamela works with professionals to better understand that choosing to be relentlessly positive, <laughs> even in difficult situations, isn't naive, it's leadership. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the concept of relentless positivity, what it means for leaders and what it means for people in general and how it can be transformative. So let's get straight into it, Pamela. Uh, we're not by we're not by nature, to be perfectly honest, as humans born to be relentlessly or we're not relentlessly positive. Maybe we are born to be relentlessly positive. It just knocked out of us very quickly. <laughs> but so so tell me about how you came to this, uh, uh, you know, the genesis of coming to this concept of relentless positivity and why you focused your, your career on that. Uh, thank you, John. That's a really interesting question, because uh, research does show that we are actually kind of born with what we would call a happiness or optimism or positivity set point. And some people are built with a, or born with a higher or happier or more positive set point than others. And by set point, I mean that it's kind of our, our natural state. And I've always had a very natural, positive, happy, optimistic attitude. And it's just simply been part of who I am and how I function. And for many years, I worked with leaders and they would say to me all the time, how do you handle? And then they would talk about a difficult or challenging situation. And I did my PhD work in communication. So I typically come at things from that. How do you communicate in those challenging situations? But I recognized they weren't asking that question. They wanted to know mm -hmm. emotionally like about resiliency and how do they manage and lead during those difficult times. And after a couple of decades as a speaker and author, it struck me that there was probably some room to share with leaders how to cultivate that attitude of positivity and not in that rah, rah, happy, clappy cheerleader yeah. sort of way, but how to cultivate that attitude of positivity in a way that would make them more effective leaders. So over time, I, I won't say I stumbled upon, but I did decide that I really liked the concept of relentless positivity because it really sums up uh, what I talk about when I teach leaders how to handle from an internal perspective the challenges of leadership. Yeah, you know, it, it it's fascinating, because you know, as, as you just said there, <clears throat> you know, some people are born with it, some people are born with higher levels of it. Um, but <clears throat> let's face it, I mean, as we go through life, society teaches us to that relentless positivity. That's why I like where you said uh, relentless, even in difficult situation, isn't naive, it's li it's leadership. Because a lot of people will tell you, oh, well, you, you know, being relentlessly positive, it's great, but it's not, it's not real. It's not realistic. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit naive. Let's be honest. You can't always be positive about everything. <laughs> and that's, I think that's such an interesting distinction because one of the things that I think it's very important for individuals and in particular leaders to understand is that relentless positivity is not the same as being happy. And so when you hear people talk about how, oh, it's just naive, you, you're you looking at the world through rose-colored glasses if you think you're going to be positive all the time, I think they get that confused with being happy all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that it is practical or possible to be happy all the time. That's That's a whole different goal. Being relentlessly positive is very different from being in a good mood, from being in a happy mood. And so it is realistic to choose relentless positivity because it's the lens that you place on every experience. And most of the time, people who try to say, oh, you can't be positive all the time. You can't be always like this. That's just not realistic. They are actually the ones who are very pessimistic. They won't. And if you say to them they're pessimists, they'll say, oh, no, I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. And they've created a reality for themselves through, because they are looking at the world through a more pessimistic versus optimistic lens. 
And yeah, you know what's fa- sorry. Do you know what I was going to say? Oh. What's fascinating about what you just said about the about the being happy all the time is, uh, you know, there is something in the culture today where people are saying, "Oh, yeah, you should be happy." You know, your job all the time. You should be happy, and if it's not, then there's something wrong. And I just think that's such a it's so it's so misleading for people to think that you could be happy all the time in your job. Now, what you said about you can be positive, you know, you're going to have challenges of how you meet them. But a constant state of happiness, my goodness, that's like psychosis. Well, not only <laughs> is it not really possible, it's also a poor leadership choice. Imagine the scenario. Imagine you are a, a mid-level leader and you have needed to make a number of people on your team redundant or, you know, mm-hmm. free them up for opportunities elsewhere. In translation, you had to fire people. And so on a Friday, your team lost, say, 25% of its members. And that's a very hard day. It would be ridiculous and it would be a poor leadership choice for a leader to go in on Monday and be rah, rah, happy, clappy, and like, woohoo, it's the best day ever. I'm so excited about this Monday. Your team wouldn't trust you. They would think, what, yeah. why are you, you are unfeel, you're a monster. We just lost 25% of our colleagues, 25% of our peers are now looking for work today. And, you know, they have a bit of survivor's remorse and uh, guilt or whatever that's uh, called. And if you as a leader pretend like nothing is wrong in the gl- face of some really glaring challenges, you lose credibility. You lose trust. People don't trust you if you try to sugarcoat something and pretend nothing's wrong. But you can still be relentlessly positive in that scenario, which is very different than being happy or chipper or acting like nothing is wrong. So, um, I mean, I, I agree with you. Unfortunately, I've been in that situation myself a number of times and, uh, you know, having to lay people off. It's probably the worst thing you can do, especially when it's not performance, when it's not performance related, when it's economic, when it's driven by economics. It's the mm-hmm. worst thing in the world where you have to let people go who are doing a good job. Um, OK, so how does one start on this path to adopting the uh, adopting relentless positivity? And can you give me a, f- a few examples of of, you know, how this can manifest? Well, let's go back to the example of someone who has had to uh, lay people off, Mm -hmm. as you say, not for performance issues, but for economic issues. And so you walk into the office and instead of being, hey, it's a great Monday, it's acknowledging that Friday was a tough day for all of us. And I know that we will be able to rally together as a team and continue to meet our customers' needs, continue to provide great customer service. So you hear that difference there. That's that acknowledgement Mm -hmm. that it was tough. And so I believe that the choices we make every day and how we communicate both internally and externally. And this is why it's such a powerful tool to have good communication skills along with a relentlessly positive attitude because they work in conjunction with one another. So I believe that we start by looking at how we're communicating with ourselves and with others. And in the case of the relentlessly positive leader who has to lay people off and then come into the office the next day, you'll notice that the relentlessly positive leader does not negate the negative. Instead, they would say, Friday was really difficult for all of us. And instead of but, so you get rid of the but because the but wipes out the Mm -hmm. statement or the empathetic statement that you just made or the exceedingly human statement that you just made. If you use the word and instead of the word but, it allows both things to be true, which is, Friday was difficult, and I know we can rally together today to continue to meet our clients' needs and give great customer service or whatever the goals and objectives are. So those things can coexist. And fundamental to the concept of relentless positivity is understanding that you can hold in your heart or your head or wherever you want to think of it, you can hold two seemingly contradictory emotional states at the same time. I can be both sad and relieved. I can be both uh, disappointed and upset that I had to let people go and optimistic that my remaining employees can do an amazing job. And one would think, wait a minute, you're, you're sad and yet you're hopeful at the same time? Yes. So one of the secrets to learning how to be relentlessly positive is accepting that you can hold two simultaneous or two seemingly very contradictory emotional states at the same time. 
Yeah, you know, that's, that's a really fascinating point. Uh, I'm glad you raised that. And I just, I just had noted it down here, is that you don't negate the, the negative part. You, you address it, you acknowledge it, but you don't, you don't let that dominate or that be the sole focus, right? The, it's, it's the duality that you're talking about here, which, is, which I think is great, because I don't think a lot of people realize that you can have these totally almost conflicting emotions at the same time and you can you can actually make both work for you if you like and what's fascinating about the concept of accepting the negative emotions is it falls in line with a principle that i believe in very strongly which is what we resist persists i'll share mm. that again because it's such a powerful concept what we resist persists. So I'd like to think sometimes as say a frustration or anger or disappointment, some of these emotional states that we don't particularly like that don't feel so great. A lot of us try to ignore those emotions. And we use a lot of self-talk that sounds like I shouldn't be so upset about this. I shouldn't let this bug me. I shouldn't pay. I should not get worked up about this. I shouldn't be so um, hurt by mm -hmm. this. I, and we try essentially to say to that emotional state, you are not worthy. You don't deserve to exist. You're, I'm not going to acknowledge you. Well, if you think of that emotion as like a toddler or a preschooler, if you ignore a toddler or preschooler, they don't <laughs> settle down. They amp up. Mm -hmm. So the more I try to tell myself I should not be upset about something, the more power that upset is going to generate and the more it's going to try and dominate my thoughts. But if I say, yep, I'm upset. Oh, that acceptance of, yep, I'm upset. I don't put all this energy towards fighting the upset. I just acknowledge, yeah, I'm upset. Or yes, this is difficult. Or yes, this is hard. Mm -hmm. And it makes it very easy for it to just kind of lose some of its intensity. And it's it would be a challenge that I would give to everyone is the next time you find yourself saying, I shouldn't be so upset about this or any other negative emotion. Or I shouldn't let this get on my nerves. I shouldn't let this bother me. Accept it. Say, this bothers me. Or this mm. is upset me. And just suspend judgment. And then you can either talk about what you're going to do differently in the future. Because that's what a relentlessly positive person does. Is that they stay future focused. They focus on the things that are coming. Not on the things that are in the past. Like, okay. So, yeah. This hurt my feelings. What am I going to do with it? Or how am I going to handle it? Or what can my, what's my next best step? That's how a relentlessly positive person takes all that energy that they were putting towards cramming those negative emotions mm -hmm. down and transfers it into something productive. Yeah. And and there's a I mean, there's another part to that, too, is the the mind body connection, too, which I, I think is that if you suppress if you suppress negative things, you suppress anger, you suppress all of those things without understanding the root cause of eventually it'll manifest physically anyway. It's absolutely toxic. Absolutely. It will come out physically. It will come out in unexpected emotional outbursts. So you'll find yourself being upset about something that normally would not even come close to bothering you. And you might lash out at others. Uh, so you do relationship damage. You, it's toxic for our own physical system. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. They don't go away. But what yeah. we can do is accept them and learn how to live because peacefully, so to speak, with them or to coexist with because so what happens, and this is a fascinating concept, is if we decide we're not going to feel our negative stuff, we also limit our capacity to feel the good stuff because emotions don't exist in separate places. We either have feel things or we don't feel things. And so yeah. many of us try not to feel the negative, so we kind of limit our emotional bandwidth. And when we do that, we also limit our ca capacity for joy and love and mm. fun, excitement. Yeah, that's a that's a fascinating concept, actually. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so, when you work with when you work with leaders and, and organizations, what is one of the things that surprises them most at the beginning when they start the process of moving to being relentlessly positive? I see you laughing. That's why I'm looking forward to the answer. <laughs> well, it, 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 because there's almost always two things that come up. One is something we've touched on already, which is the person who gives a lot of pushback and says, well, that's not real. You can't be like that all the time. And come to find out, they think they're being realistic and everybody else knows that they're a pessimist. 
So their mm-hmm. teammates, when they say, well, I'm just a realist, their teammates will give them or their fellow leaders will give them the eye that says, no, you're really not a realist. You're more of a pessimist. <laughs> and so it's very fascinating to watch that transformation when someone realizes that they've been telling themselves they're a realist and really uh, they are coming across as someone who is a pessimist or a negativist. So that's always a fascinating concept. But the biggest surprise I think people have is they expect, for example, if I'm giving a keynote presentation, they expect it to be kind of this rah, rah, cheerleader, happy, clappy thing. Like, oh, just be in a good mood and be positive and, you know, be that example to your team and all of the, which are very important things to be. And I think they're very surprised that you can be relentlessly positive and not be an extrovert. Mm-hmm. You can be an introvert and be relentlessly positive. You can be relentlessly positive and ha- have a very difficult job where you make very difficult, even life and death decisions. I work a lot in the defense industry and they take those things very, very seriously because lives are on, on the line. And uh, it's it's interesting for them to realize that you can take your job, your responsibilities as a leader very seriously and still be relentlessly positive. It's not about being bubbly and upbeat all the time. It's about a mindset. Yeah, no, that's great because, yeah, I would say that a lot of people would mistake it for, okay, so if I just walk around clapping my hands and being a cheerleader, I'm being mm-hmm. relentlessly positive. But the but the point is is an excellent one is that you, here's where you have to be an actual a realist, if you like, you have to be realistic about what's happening and figure out, okay, what's the next, what's the best step forward and how do I, present this in such a way as we said earlier, as we acknowledge the downsides or whatever, but we also, you know, promote and say, we're going to focus on, on, on the upsides and how we're going to get there. And from my perspective, I like to think of um, relentlessly positive as the constant application. And that's a key word application of effective and productive optimism. Mm. So it's, how we choose to see things and seeing the potential, looking at the duality of both things. So as seeing not only the negative, but also the ability to see the upside of things or where there's possibility for growth and where there's possibility to learn. That is, that's an optimist. An optimist can say, yes, this is really hard and it's an opportunity for me to learn and grow. But notice there's nothing in that definition of, you know, the effective or the constant application of effective and productive optimism that has anything to do with being rah-rah, chipper, upbeat, constantly happy. It's not about that at all. It is that application piece, though. It's the intentional choice because that also is the defining characteristic of someone who is relentlessly positive, is they are making choices consistently to apply optimism, relentlessly apply it. And it's a choice every Mm -hmm. day situation by situation. And then there are tools that you can use to make that choice effective and productive. And those are some of the tools that I teach my clients. It's like, okay, so how do you do that? What's that application look like? Because people say, well, I don't know how to apply this. It's like, here, here's how you do it. And we learn some basic rules of good, relentlessly positive communication because it's we're always communicating. It's the currency by which we lead. So if I'm able to communicate in that relentlessly positive fashion, I become this relentlessly positive leader. So we learn the tools to apply. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love the bit about communication too, because I think that's what a lot of people learned over the pandemic is um, how how important communication really is, and particularly from leaders and how over communicating and communicating in multiple different ways for different audiences and all that, how critical that is, because I think there's there's often this I think there's often this bias where people think, okay, this is how I communicate or this is how I receive information. I'm just going to push that out. Yes. And I think also probably during the, the pandemic, uh, probably also even the optimistic among us may have taken a bit of a hit. So I like the what you said about choice because I think that's so important that we, we there are so many things that we perceive as being outside of our control, but our choices are always within our control. And, you know, it's interesting, Albert Einstein said, and I really love this notion, that the most important choice we will ever make is whether we live in a friendly or a hostile 
universe. Mm. Think about that for a moment. There are people who choose to see the world, the universe, their life, everyone and everything in it as out to get them, conspiring against them. And if you've decided that you live in a hostile universe, guess what's going to happen? Everybody is going to be out yep. to get you because that's we get <laughs> what we expect. That's just that self-fulfilling prophecy notion. Uh, so I think that if we decide on this basic core level that the world, the universe, whatever words make sense to you as an individual is a friendly place, life's going to be a lot easier. And you will experience more joy and that everything is conspiring for my good and for my benefit, not for my demise and to hurt. But some people make the exact opposite choice and they think the world's out to get them. And I choose to think that I live in a world that has lovely opportunities and it's up to me to make choices on how to manage to negotiate those opportunities. So that's, yeah. I think that's the most important choice a relentlessly positive person can make every day. Is that yeah. overall? Yeah. Uh yeah, no, I love that. That's that's fantastic. And I do think that it it is it is a real choice. And I think sometimes just people just need to just for a moment take a look back and think and look at all the things that you have achieved. Even if you think you're you've got nowhere, you've achieved an awful lot. And the fact that you're still here is is an <laughs> achievement in itself, to be honest. <laughs> and it, you know, it's interesting that you would say that because one of the exercises that I teach some of my coaching clients, because I work with mid to senior level leaders on a one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one basis and help them develop some of these habits as well as speak in a keynote capacity or workshops. And one of the things that I will talk about is some of the practices that we can use on a regular basis. Journaling, for example. So I believe in the power of 100. So if you journal 100 cool things you've accomplished in your life. Now, some people are like, I haven't accomplished a hundred cool things. It's like, yes, you have. You have accomplished a hundred cool things. Yeah. You, and the challenge of 100 is it makes you dig deep. The first five, the first 10 might be really easy. You start getting into, you know, 40 and 50 and people are starting to dig really deep for <laughs> number 49, cool things that I've accomplished. And sometimes I'll say not in your life, but in your current position, what are a hundred really impactful things you have done in your current role as a leader? And, oh, they just dig, they, they come up with crazy things, but they begin <laughs> to see how they have focused so much of their attention on what mm -hmm. they have not done, that they are not paying attention to what they have done. And we want the weight of all the positives to be driving us, not the weight of the negatives to be pulling us. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. I totally agree. I love that. Love that exercise. I encourage people to try it. Um, all of Pamela's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Uh, well, thank you for asking, John. I am a communication and leadership skills expert, obviously, and I uh, provide coaching services, one-on-one -on -one coaching services, as well as leadership academies. They are available in a virtual capacity for people who like to do that, as well as in person. And as well, I also speak at conferences and events. So if people are looking for a keynote speaker, we have a great keynote presentation designed to help people understand and embrace the concept of being a relentlessly positive leader. And of course, you can find out more about me at PamelaJet.com. Yeah, and I'd highly encourage people to go check it out. And as I said, you've got a great keynote uh, keynote speaker. Who doesn't need a message of relentless positivity that doesn't come with like flag waving and clapping, but comes with practical, practical advice and application. So listen, thank you again, Pamela, for today. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I'll see you all again very soon. Yeah.